My name is William Bernal. I'm an intensivist hepatologist and I work at the Liver Intensive Therapy Unit, which is part of the Institute of Liver Studies at King's College Hospital in London in the United Kingdom. The title that I've written on is, is about acute liver failure, which is paraphrased, a curable disease potentially by 2024. Acute liver failure is, is, is an absolutely devastating illness um, that uh, 30 or 40 years ago was really very poorly understood and what we've seen over the last 30 to 40 years is a real explosion of understanding of the illness. So that it's meant that it's been transformed from an illness in which the vast majority of patients, really more than 90% of patients would be expected to die, to one in which the, the great majority of patients will now survive. And that's arisen as a consequence of a whole series of, of radical changes in the understanding of the condition. The milestones really have stemmed from an understanding of the natural history of the condition. This is a condition where uh, previously well people, so these are people who haven't had any previous uh, forms of chronic liver disease, have suddenly developed a, a liver failure. The liver has failed for a whole series of different reasons, really over the course of a couple of days or weeks and the patients have moved um, from a state of being very well to being profoundly unwell. It's a rapidly developing critical illness. And what we've uh, achieved, I think, over the last 30 to 40 years really has followed on from a really clear understanding of the natural history of the condition. So we now understand how patients' uh, condition can change as a consequence of the different causes of the illness. So we understand the natural history of the condition, we understand how we can best target the various interventions that we have for this condition now. And that's mean that we've got now very sophisticated means for treating these patients medically, but also understanding those patients in whom medical care will be unsuccessful, and so these are the patients in whom we should we should use emergency liver transplantation. And over the last 30 to 40 years, we've now understood who we can transplant and how we can successfully transplant them, which has been no small undertaking, given that these patients are critically ill, usually in an intensive care unit, and must undergo a huge uh, surgical procedure with all sorts of risks associated with it. The condition really um, ha has changed dramatically, as I say, over the last 30, or 30 years in that the, the success of medical therapy now means that we are approaching the point where the, the paradigm must change again. Many more patients are surviving with medical management alone. So that the, the ways that we use to select patients for liver transplantation are no longer necessarily applicable because many of the patients now will get better for medical, with medical management alone. So we need to know how to best apply liver transplantation to this patient group. Um, we need to understand the new natural history of the condition. Um, in a way, that's illustrated by the fact that the phenotype of the illness has changed. In uh, previous years, the vast majority of patients who died would die as a consequence of rapidly developing brain swelling, cerebral edema resulting in intracranial hypertension and, and brainstem death. And for reasons that we don't fully understand, but probably relating to much more effective medical care, many more patients uh, never develop this complication. So we now see it in only a small minority of patients. And what we need to do is to understand why that has happened so that we can, uh, we can better apply the treatments um, to those patients in whom this complication still develops. So the phenotype of the illness is changing and we need to understand why. In conclusion, um, I'd just like to, to, to say that the changes that we've seen in the condition, the increasing success both of medical and transplantation therapy in this setting, is not as a consequence of any single unit. This is an exceptionally rare condition affecting probably between five and six cases per, per million population per year in, in the West. And the advances that we've seen really have been primarily as a consequence of collaborative research, such as been, has been fostered by the European and American associations. And it's through collaboration that we've learned much more about the, condi the condition. Such a rare condition can only be properly studied and the interventions tested through collaborative research.